In this video, we're going to examine the relationship between ratios that involve the sides, perimeters, areas, and volumes of figures. And we're going to start out by taking a look at two squares who have sides of lengths 2 and 3. So just to get a clear picture of what it is that we're looking at here, I'm going to draw one square whose sides have length 2. and a second square whose sides have length 3. And the very first thing that we're asked to do is explain why the squares must be similar. Well, all squares are the same basic shape, making them similar. They meet that most basic definition of what it means for two things to be similar, and that is having the same shape. Part B, they want to know what is the ratio of the corresponding sides of our particular squares. Now, we can write this ratio either 2 to 3 or 3 to 2. It doesn't specify whether we should do larger to smaller or smaller to larger. For our practical purposes here in this video, I'm going to write or continue doing small to large. Part C wants us to figure out the ratio of their perimeters. So the perimeter of the smaller square is going to be 8. Perimeter of the larger square is going to be 12. So this relationship or this ratio is going to be 8 to 12. This is where I'm going to go dig for my calculator because I want to make sure that I express each and every one of my ratios in simplest form. So to put a ratio into the calculator, I'm going to go ahead and use my fraction key. So I find my fraction bar by doing control and then the division key. And that, that's not the only way that you can bring up a fraction bar on the screen, but it's probably the shortest and the quickest. Control, division. So I want a fraction where I have a numerator of 2, sorry, numerator of 8, and a denominator of 12. And if I enter that fraction 8 12s into the calculator and hit enter, it's going to simplify or reduce the fraction for me. So as a fraction in simplest form, this guy here is 2 to 3. Notice that the ratio that compares their perimeters is exactly the same as the ratio that compares their sides. So I'm going to abbreviate ratio of the perimeters by doing a capital R, P, ratio of the perimeters, is equal to ratio of the sides. That's an important thing to know. The ratio that compares their perimeter perimeters is always the same as the ratio that compares their sides. Okay, part D wants us to compare or find the ratio of their areas. So in order to do that, I would need to know the area of each square. So area of the little guy is going to be 4. Area of the big guy is going to be 9. So the ratio which compares the small area to the large area is going to be 4 to 9. And again, I might be tempted to grab my calculator and see if I can simplify or reduce or express that fraction in a more simple form. And when I type that into my calculator, I find that the fraction 4 ninths is already in simplest form. So this brings us to a little bit of a dilemma, a little bit of a puzzle, because I was thinking that maybe this ratio of the areas or the comparison of the areas would be exactly the same as the comparison of the sides. But I find that it's not. When I compared the lengths of the corresponding sides, I ended up with 2 to 3. But when I compared the, the corresponding areas, I ended up with 4 to 9. So these two are not the same, but they do have a little bit of a relationship here. I noticed that that ratio of their areas, 4 ninths, is the same as what I get when I take the square of the ratio of their corresponding sides. So that's going to be an important thing to know. Ratio of the areas is equal to what you get when you take the ratio of the sides and square it. That, too, is going to be a big idea moving forward. I always remember this because area is measured in square units. All right, now we're going to take these squares and we're going to build some cubes. So we're going to take the little square and we're going to use the cubes as faces. So our little cube 
is going to be 2 long by 2 wide by 2 high. And our larger cube is going to be 3 long by 3 wide by 3 high. And they want us to now at this point compare their volumes. So volume of the little cube is going to be 2 times 2 times 2, or 8. Volume of the big fella is going to be 3 times 3 times 3, which is 27. So if I write the, their volumes as a ratio, I'm looking at 8 to 27. And again, I'm going to grab my calculator real quick, and I'm going to simplify or reduce that, make sure that it is indeed in simplest form. And I'm thinking that it probably is, but it's always a good idea to use that calculator to check. And indeed, I was correct. It already is in simplest form. So the ratio of the volumes here is going to be 8 to 27. And they want to know, how does this match up? How does this compare to the ratio of the sides? So in other words, what's the relationship between the ratio of the sides, 2 to 3, and the ratio of the volumes, 8 to 27? Well, if we take the ratio of the sides and we cube it, we end up with the ratio of the volumes, 8 to 27. So the ratio of the volumes here is always going to be the cube of the ratio of the sides. I remember this because volume is always measured in cubic units. So what this means is that every problem now has three ratios. And you're going to write down those three ratios for every problem every time. Once you've written down those three ratios for that particular problem, then you're going to decide which one of those three is going to be most helpful to you in solving what is requested in the problem. But again, every problem, every time, write the three ratios down. So in looking at number one, it says triangle RST is similar to triangle XYZ. You might be tempted to draw a picture. In fact, I would probably recommend drawing a picture. So triangle RST going to be similar to this triangle XYZ. I think they give us some side lengths here. So the length of side RS is 3. The length of side XY is 2, which means my picture is a cruddy picture. But it will get the job done. They tell us that the area of triangle RST is 27. And they want us to find the area of this smaller triangle, which I'm going to call X. My first step is going to be to write down all three ratios. So ratio of the sides, which is equal to the ratio of the perimeters, is going to be either 2 to 3 or 3 to 2. I like to write small to large. If the ratio of the perimeters is 2 to 3, the ratio of the areas is going to be the square of 2 to 3. I'm pretty sure I know what the square of 2 to 3 is. But I'm just going to go ahead and plug this into my calculator and make sure that I do indeed know the square of the ratio 2 to 3. Notice that as I put this ratio into my calculator, I keep it all together. I enter the entire fraction, and I'm going to square the entire fraction or the entire ratio. And that tells me that the ratio of these areas is, as I suspected, 4 to 9. To find the ratio of the volumes, I'm going to take that ratio of the sides and I'm going to cube it. So again, I'm going to enter in the fraction 2 to 3, but this time I'm going to raise it to the third power. This one too I think I can do mentally, but I'm just going to use the calculator to double check and make certain. The ratio of that volumes is 8 to 27. So again, for every problem, three ratios every time. Now this particular problem deals with area. Because this particular problem deals with area, the ratio that I need to use in order to set up my proportion is going to be the ratio that deals with area. So 4 is to 9 is my first ratio. That's what I get when I compare the two areas. Well, I did the smaller over the larger. So when I go to write my second ratio, I need to make sure I do the smaller area, which is actually going to be this triangle that appears to be larger because my triangle or my picture is not a very well-drawn picture over the area of the larger 
27. Now if I want, I can go ahead and cross multiply in order to solve. I might be a little bit clever here and say going from 9 to 27, I multiply times 3. So going from 4 to x, I'm going to have to multiply times 3 as well. So the value of x here is going to be 12, which is what you'll get if you cross multiply. So the area of that second triangle in square inches is going to be 12. And that is a question directly off an old Regents exam. So this is a good thing to know. But again, moral of the story, every problem has three ratios. Write down all three ratios every time. Then decide which one is going to be the most helpful to you in moving forward and writing your proportion. OK. Number two is a very similar type of question, except that it deals with pentagons. It says we're dealing with these two similar pentagons here. So I'm going to go ahead and draw maybe a picture. It says the ratio of their areas is 144 to 25. So this fella has an area of 144. This guy has an area of 25. They tell us that the perimeter of the smaller pentagon is 40 centimeters. So smaller guy is this one here. And they want us to find the perimeter of the larger pentagon. So again, three ratios every time. The only two pieces of information that I know in this particular problem are the areas. So I'm going to go ahead and write as a ratio their areas, 25 to 144. And again, I'm going to use my calculator to see if I can't simplify that fraction because it's always easier to work with smaller numbers rather than large ones. But what I find is that that's already a fraction in simplest form. I also want to know the ratio of the sides, which is the same as the ratio of their perimeters. And I want to know the ratio of their volumes. Well, I know that this 25 over 144 ratio is what we got when we squared the ratio of the, the sides. So in working backwards now, if I want to undo squaring something, I'm going to do that by taking its square root. So to find the ratio of the sides, I want to actually go ahead and take the square root of the ratio of their areas. So the square root of that 25 over 144. And this you might be able to do mentally as well. But if you can't, the calculator is always a good tool. So the ratio of their sides is 5 over 12. And the ratio of their volumes, remember, we find by taking the ratio of the sides and cubing it. So I want to take that 5 twelfths, and I want to cube that number. And that'll tell me the ratio of, of their volumes. Go ahead and bring that cursor down to the next line. So that ratio, 5 over 12, which is the ratio of the sides, I then want to cube. And when I cube that number, I find the ratio of the volumes is 125 to 1728. So one problem, three ratios, you need to decide which one to use. Because this is a problem dealing with perimeter, we need to use the ratio that deals with perimeter. So I'm going to use 5 over 12. And because I wrote the smaller to larger, when I go to compare the two perimeters, I want to do smaller to larger. So the smaller fella is this one on the right. 40 is to x. And again, I can definitely go ahead and cross multiply in order to solve. Or I can simply be a little smart here and say I'm going from 5 to 40, I multiplied by 8. So I'm going from 12 to x, I must also multiply by 8. So I find that the value of x here is 96, making the perimeter of that second polygon 96. All right, as always, there's a lot of good, useful information here in that video. I want you to go ahead and summarize the important ideas and the important takeaways up at the top of the next page.